YouTube, what the crap's going on? You didn't think I was going to only make you have one video today, did you? It's holiday break or Christmas break for most of you. You need something to do, so here's some extra videos. Yeah, I did a stream last night. I didn't have time to record anything else, but I wanted to get some stuff out. This came in from Dr. Pult, the one who has sent us replays before. He's going to feature some uh, some fun elf units, and it looks like he's going up against Museon, led by the Red Duke. So let's look at it's Dr. Pult's so army. Glade Lord on the dragon, and what this is the. Hold on, let me remember which version of the Glade Lord I got. Yes. Uh, it's gonna be one of these. Well, missile resistance. I think it's the Glade Lord that focuses a little more on. Yeah, it's the actual lady. Okay, got it. So it's the more missile focused Lord. Um, Way Watchers here. Uh, I see two Wild Riders. And then there's two, uh, the Way Watchers are backed up by some uh, Glade Guard with Hagbane tips. Pretty cool pick, because they can slow down anything that comes after these guys, and these guys are going to be your armor-piercing damage dealers. A couple of, uh, or looks like, yeah, one or two Eternal Guard, one on each flank, some Tree Kin to make up the center, and then a Great Eagle in the back. So, I like the Reindeer Cavalry. <laughs> I, I don't know why I call them that, because that's what it looks like, I guess. Already spun... Summoning up skeleton warriors? Huh, it's kind of weird. Seems like you'd want to spawn those up right on top of something because now they're going to start degenerating very quickly without being in combat. A blood knight and a black knight moving up here for the vampires. Down the center there is a line of grave guard. And then on this side I see whew, two more black knights and one blood knight. Reindeer cavalry making an intercept. Tree can moving that direction. The glade lord with a nice arrows of Kurnos there. Let's see what the uh, Way Watchers there running back right in front of their uh, enemies, and they're going to be able to escape. The Hagbane tips are trying to do some work here, expecting to see yep some summoning here from the uh, the Red Duke. That's going to be pretty typical for him. And the Way Watchers and all these archers really going to have to watch out for the, the summoning there. So let's see, um, kind of see how it goes here. So the vampires pushing down the center, but the elves can kite them. And the only downside is is that the Grave Guard here that are brought have the shields. So it's going to hurt the ability of the uh, the Way Watchers to really damage as they skirmish. But it should still be possible. Interesting that the Dire Wolves have not been brought in. Um, dire Wolves over here right now would be clutch um, because they could easily stop these archers. And then honestly the Red Duke could stop these archers too if he just comes and drops a summon spell right in front of them. So... I do see several, or at least two summoned units up. But Reindeer Cavalry getting knocked out over here. Uh, this one's actually free, and it's performed very well over here. Two Black Knights down. A combination of the Lord here, and then there's the good stop. Getting all of these Dire Wolves is going to be nice, because the Dire Wolves are a real threat. Hagbane tips being used on the uh, Blood Knights. That'll slow them down. Definitely a good call, but there's Blood Knights pushing in from here. This is not looking good for some of the Archers. They're getting pincered by Blood Knights, and they're not going to live long from that, I don't think, but the Way Watchers, or at least one of them, escapes. I'm not really sure what's going on here. The Vampire player should have been on that. There are some uh, Wild Riders there. But yeah, this Way Watcher getting destroyed, that's a lot of money going down right there. Another summoned unit back here. Let's check out the summoned units. Again, like to see the summoning happening right here on these units. Gets it close, but you need to summon it right on top of them, I think, for maximum damage. Looks like the cavalry uh, black knights catching up to some of these glade guard. And then the summon units now, two of them pushing away. So let's kind of see how it plays out here. The reindeer cavalry slowing down some of these fast movers. These black knights might actually lose because there's so few of them to the glade guard in combat. And some of the tree kin here routing. Tree kin can be routed, they're not unbreakable. So yeah, the skirmishing here from the Way Watchers, a decent number of kills, to, um, but there's no ammunition left. I'm not sure if the, it pays off. That's the tricky thing with those guys. If a unit has shields, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to pay off. Nice stop there on the Blood Knights. Should be able to do some damage to them with the Eagle and a charge. Might as well. Don't want to leave the Eagle there, I wouldn't think, though, because the Blood Knights can do some pretty significant damage to it. I would just want to kind of do hit and run charges while they're stuck. But some nice fire coming in here from the Glade Guard with the Hagbane tips. Like I said, the Way Watcher or Way uh, 
Yeah, Waywatcher's already out of ammo. They picked up two chevrons, so they must have gotten something that was worth it. Even the Poison Blood Knights are easily defeating the Eagle, so Eagle would really need to get out of that fight. Blood Knights are free now, though, and they're going to try and get away, and they're going to come right here into these uh, Waywatchers. And then the uh, zombies are trying to stop the Eternal Guard, who's trying to pin in the Blood Knights. The uh, Glade Drag or the uh, Forest Dragons fighting the Red Duke here. The Red Duke would not want to be involved in this fight. That is not the kind of fight that he's going to excel in. So he's going to take off, and rightly so. He should use his speed to stay away from that dragon and keep summoning units you know, on, on top of these fights to uh, to make it a little more valuable for him. He's going to come down to the ground. Not really sure I agree with here. And then these Grave Guard, some of them pushing in towards the fight. They all definitely need to be pushing in. These uh, Hagbane tip Glade Guard out here are going to be pretty annoying. They've still got eight ammo left, and they can poison these units and make them exceedingly slow to get to combat. Red Duke's going to slip away, but it's looking... Um, I don't really think it's looking good for the vampires because this, uh, this dragon is in good shape, and there's still plenty of units on the ground for the uh, Wood Elves that I, the vampires would have a difficult time catching. And if the uh, Red Duke goes down here, this one's going to be over real quick. With the dragon vomiting all over you like that, then it shouldn't take long. Yeah, Red Duke's a pretty cool looking unit. There he is. He looks like a, a Blood Knight. Or actually, no, those are some Blood Knights there. My bad. <laughs> but I think he does look like a Blood Knight. Yeah, there he is. Kind of looks like a Blood Knight in his armor. It'd be cool if he would have had a bonus versus large on certain mounts because of that. So, anyway, the uh, vampires are going to get wrapped up here. Dr. Polt and his Wood Elves are going to take this one home. Let's check out his other replay that he sent in, which was against the uh, dwarves, which should be fun. This one, I felt like the, the vampire player could have done a lot better summoning, and I'll, I'll try and demonstrate what it is that I'm thinking of here. Let's, uh, let's custom battle, vampire, and then over here, let's put, um, well, we can demonstrate on the green skins. I won't, I'll just uh, stick this guy in here. We get rid of all these dumb abilities, because we, we don't want anything to be effective. But like, if you just uh, put some uh, Gobbo Archers, and obviously Elven Archers are better, but let's just say that we had some uh, some Gobbo Archers and you were looking to distract them, and you were using the Vampires, you picked the Red Duke, he's got the right spells. You could do something like uh, like this. So I'd have the Red Duke, mount him up on his uh, Hellsteed, which is a pretty popular mount for him. Arcane Conduit may not be a bad pick for him. I'd have to look into it a little bit deeper. But let's let's say this is our situation. I'm going to throw uh, some zombies just to make the balance bar look a little bit better and have some units on the ground. I'll kind of demonstrate what it is I'm, I'm thinking in terms of how you, uh, how you summon up units to stop missiles. So here we go. Got some zombies. Let's bring our red duke down this flank. Okay. Start walking the zombies forward. Just to give the archer something to look at. And let's fast forward and I'll kind of just show you what I have now. Of course they're just going to want to come shoot at the red duke, which is fine. That's what the AI should do. So I'm just going to come straight on it. But essentially, when you get it in the right spot, put it right on top of them. Just like that. Now those guys are done firing, so I can keep the Red Duke moving. Stay right on top of him again. It makes it hard for him to shoot, and it helps you summon. Missed just a little bit there, but you can at least start the chase there to keep these guys busy. I'm going to put it in the direction they were running. We'll see if we catch them. There we go. That might catch them. So you see how that works? So you're wanting to summon right on top. And I was using overcast summons there so I get the uh, skeleton warriors. You can do a standard summon, obviously, and get the uh, just the zombies. That That's the kind of summoning that I like to see from a flying vampire um, wizard or the red duke, Manfred. All of them would be able to do it. And you see how, like, over here, you know, a unit starts to run away. 
can put something out in their path, you know, to cut it off. So, again, that, that kind of summoning I, I like, where the Red Duke can get in there and just be an extreme nuisance. Now, he should do pretty good against a Lord like this uh, Night Goblin Big Boss, who doesn't have a lot of armor. Because he's got that duelist trait and stuff. Here, let's make sure my guy's healed and let's come take this fight. Use that L Sif ability here. Oh, I can't target it on an enemy lord or hero. I got it. Yeah, I would think that the uh, the Red Duke should do pretty good in a fight like this. It's got that duelist trait. Yeah, he's not blowing my mind here, but it's working. I'm going to summon up a unit of skeletons to chase back these archers. Yeah, this is just a demonstration of how you can use some of those summon units to your... Uh, advantage. Red Duke is uh, not performing nearly as nice as I'd like to see here. This is a cheap Night Goblin War boss that doesn't have any buffs. But his melee attack does poison. At least it looked like it did. Yeah, it says melee attack does poison. There he goes. He's finally getting some good hits in. So he, he cleans it up, but yeah, I would I would think those are the type of targets that he would actually do decent melee against, but then again, I could be wrong, I don't know. Let's quit that battle, let's load a replay in, let's go to the other replay that Dr. Polt sent us. Check it out. Elves versus Dwarves. He told me this is a good match, so I'm curious to watch it. Starfire Shafts, um, those can be a good pick versus the Dwarves, but they can also be a risky pick in the sense that they're armor-piercing, but um, again, the dwarves have a lot of shields, and that can be problematic. So shields block a significant amount of the shots. Got a Waystalker with a Way Watcher out here, protected by a Wild Rider. Don't have to worry about that as much with the dwarves. And what do we got over here? Three cannons? Woo! Dwarf player's got uh, Quarlers with great weapons, which is an odd pick. Um, definitely would have... I mean, why would you go with the Quarler with a great weapon? Whenever you can go with a standard Quarler who has a shield and uh, can block some of the incoming shots, especially when the Elves are not a high armor faction. So the Quarler with great weapon would be best in melee, or better in melee against a high armor unit. Again, that just does not make sense. That's not a good pick. Um, I see this sometimes from folks who just because it's more expensive, they pick it thinking it's better. And that may or may not be the case here, but typically that's the case. And uh, that's not necessarily true. You have to know why something costs more. It's because these guys deal more armor-piercing damage in melee. But again, even their, uh, and it's their weapon strength there that you can see where it's 30 weapon strength. Um, so you'd have to know what those guys are intended to do. Their skirmishing is not as good as a standard quarreler. You're paying extra to have slightly better melee capabilities. So just to make that clear. So let's see, Dr. Polt's going to approach. It's kind of a long replay, so I'm going to fast forward in. Looks like he's using his arrows at Kurnos to try and weaken up. He was, I think he was going for the artillery, but he hit some of these guys. He's taken a lot of damage. Uh, having some lore of life here would have been very helpful to keep his um, Treekin healed. But if they lose unit models, um, then he'll be in trouble. But see how they haven't lost unit models here? He could heal that damage. So the Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts are going to open fire, but again... Shields on the front lines of the dwarves are going to slow a lot of the damage that they're going to take, and it's going to make the uh, Glade Guard use a considerable amount of their ammunition. And then the Quarlers with great weapons have opened fire on the Tree Kin, and the Tree Kin are starting to suffer pretty badly here. But the uh, Way Stalker is now firing from long range out here on the flank, moving up with the, uh, or the Way Watchers with the Way Stalker. The Way Stalker could do some good damage on the flanks if he's able to get his arrows of Kurnos in. And then this eagle, I would think, is going to want to get into in here and um, maybe distract the slayers so that the dragon or someone can get in here and get these cannons. Definitely going to want to get rid of the cannons because they can continually fire like this. They're going to do damage. And it almost seems like the, um, the starfire shafts would be better to kill the quarrelers, honestly, right now. Because the, uh, the quarrelers, and it looks like he's changing some of his fire, so that's great. These guys don't have shields. 
and they do have a little bit of armor, or a pretty good amount of armor, so they would be an ideal target, I think, for the uh, Glade Guard with the Starfire Shafts. So let's see what happens. Got some uh, Wild Riders around each flank, the Eagles being shot as it moves in, but again, this should just continue to give an opportunity for the Glade Guard to finish off the Quarrelers. And I like to see them kind of focusing a unit down here too. The Eagle is, is very, very soft. They're definitely a light hit and run unit here. And when they get put into heavy combat like this unsupported, definitely not gonna be a happy place for the Eagle. The Reindeer Cavalry though, see the Longbeards with great weapons being kept on the flank. They don't, they do have a charge defense against large now. I forget that. So that'll actually be okay in terms of defense. It looks like the other uh, Wild Rider looking to get into the back of that long beard. Not sure why he wouldn't just go for the, the cannons. He could have taken out like probably all three cannons in the one charge. But a good job doing a ton of damage here to the long beards, hitting them in the back with that charge. Let's see, it looks like the uh, Way Watchers and the uh, Way Stalker kind of firing in from the flank. Way Stalker already tired? Sure is. Wow, he gets tired easy. Seems like that would be a trait where he could resist fatigue for a little longer. All right, the Great Eagle's back in here, but the Slayers are around, so he's going to want to get away from there. The uh, Eagle is a prime target for Slayers because it's got low armor and it's large. The Slayers actually got a little extra AP recently, too. This looks like a good target for an Arrows of Kurnos, to be, to be honest. I'd love to see an Arrows of Kurnos slam into that fight. And now the um, the Wild Riders are starting to make themselves felt. The focusing of the Quarrelers is starting to pay dividends because the Dwarf is losing um, skirmishing power. So, good choice. The cannons are now getting disrupted a lot more with the Eagle and other units around. The Treekin have done a really good job in the center. And Thorgrim's actually taken a considerable amount of damage. I wonder if uh, the Blade Lord has, yeah, it's firing on uh, Thorgrim, so that makes sense. Looks like the Wild Riders getting some more good work done here in the back of these Dwarf Warriors. They should be able to do considerable damage with charges, but again, I'd like to see him take out the cannons, though I understand because the Slayers are nearby that he's probably hesitant there. But the cannons can actually damage, um, like his, uh, they're probably firing at his Glade Board. Only 56 kills here on the, uh, the Way Watchers. I'm not a big fan of these units. They, they have good stats now. But there's still only 45 of them, and it doesn't seem like they have enough ammo uh, to really do a ton of damage, but I could be wrong. It depends on whether he chevron these guys coming into the fight, which I don't remember. If they picked up two chevrons, eh, it could be okay. Just not really an impressive number of kills. Now the Slayer's over here chasing. They're at 40 speed, and the Waystalker's going to have to watch out. Because these Waywatchers are going to get creamed by the uh, Slayer's. And this uh, Waystalker is definitely going to want to stay away from that. Let's see how this finishes out. Thorgrim is still under fire. Looks like the uh, Blade Lord on the Dragon's coming down here. It should do okay in this combat. Um, Thorgrim does magical attacks, which are good because there's physical resistance on the Dragon. So Thorgrim will actually be in a pretty good spot here. But the, uh, the uh, Glade Lord on the Dragon also does some pretty significant AP damage. So we'll kind of see how that turns out. Check out this sweet view there. Get him, dragon. Ooh, Thorgrim just split someone open. Look at that uh, tail attack from the dragon there. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, Thorgrim is uh, definitely getting uh, getting crapped on here. But there's not a lot of elf units left, and uh, the Glade Lord does not have the benefit of the lore of life around to help. Thorgrim is still alive. Wild Riders, nice charge here into the back of these engaged infantry units. Thorgrim getting very close to death. Regrouped Wild Rider into the two cannons. Good play because the, uh, the Slayers are now over here. Or where did they get to? Right here. Now they're back in this fight over towards the, uh, the cavalry and the uh, Glade Lord. Glade Lord has a potion though, so that's a good play since they didn't have the Lord of Life. I forget that they can bring a potion. 
not many people using a lot of potions anymore because they took them away from heroes. And so it's kind of nice, actually. It's made legendary lords a lot more viable in recent patches. Definitely a good move. So Thorgrim is fleeing. He's down to 414 hit points, but the uh, the Glade Lord is also about to flee. Look at that, though. The Waystalker just lighting these guys up with the arrows of Kurnos with a ton of kills because their hit points were already low. So this Waystalker now can make his presence felt. If he can just kind of hang on and... Um, let the other units on the ground do some distraction. It'd be good to see the Glade Lord come over here and finish off, um, finish off uh, Thorgrim. This cannon's going to be shut down by the very few Wild Riders that remain. So good, good play. Yeah, I'd like to see Thorgrim get shut down out here because he's going to be giving map uh, boost to the melee of any units if he gets close enough. And then the Waystalker should be able to just. Oh yeah, there you go. Arrows of Kurnos. If the Waystalker continues to use Arrows of Kurnos from a distance, um, he can really do a lot of damage. To that melee blob and it's critical that he stays alive too or else the uh, the glade lord will lose leadership for being a flying unit with nothing on the ground rune of wrath and ruin here is going to do very little very very little it's meant for a multiple unit target and then the uh, rune smith gets left out in the open here let's see how that goes though should do good for the dragon but i mean the dragon doesn't have a ton of hit points and I'm going to see if it's used the potion. Looks like it has used the potion. Because it's healed quite a few hit points. Alright, here comes the entire dwarf army. Let's see if the uh, dragon can get away in time. It did rout the uh, runesmith with very little damage in return. But it's got to get away from all these slayers and other units. And if there's an Arrows of Kurnos up soon, this blob right here is a beautiful target for it. Thorgrim's back, so a nice little charge right over here on the Thorgrim. There's the Arrows of Kurnos. Looks like it targeted a Dwarf Warrior there. Quite a lot more kills for the Waystalker. A blobbed infantry unit that's already taken some damage will get really, really wrecked. Another Rune of Wrath and Ruin here. Again, not going to do much, but might as well use it, I guess, if you're the Dwarf player. Because there's nothing else to use it on. Thorgrim is now dead. If he hits the... Yep, there goes the runesmith. So, good call. So now the rest of the dwarf units, um, since they're just dwarf warriors, should be fairly susceptible to terror from a good charge from the dragon. Looks like he's trying to charge the slayers. Again, they are going to have to be dealt with. It's still nine minutes left? Wow. So it looks like a one by one trying to hit stuff with the dragon. There he goes. Good call. Stay away from the Slayers. Terrorize the other units. Just going to pin these guys in place. Hit them with the arrows of Kurnos. Not as good of a hit that time. Because there wasn't as much of a blob. These Dwarf Warriors are being surprisingly resilient right now. Considering they have no Lord. And they're getting hit by a unit that causes terror. There you go. Beautiful arrows of Kurnos there. Nice job. So the Dwarf players kind of feeling uh, helpless at this point. If he blobs up, he's going to get hit by the arrows of Kurnos. If he doesn't blob up, he's going to get terrorized by the dragon. So he's kind of in a danged if you do, danged if you don't scenario here. The Slayers are the only unbreakable unit he has. Um, so that will be a bit of a challenge because they could potentially do some nice damage to the dragon. Which does have some armor, but it's not super heavy armor. So the arrows of Kurnos are going to be necessary to kind of try and get rid of the Slayers while everything else is dealt with. And then Cycle Charges should be able to finish... The Slayer's like, just hit, run, hit, run. It's about the only way you're going to be able to do it to them. Yep, there he goes. So it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory. It was a very close battle. I think there was plenty of mistakes on both sides, but a couple of key things to call out. The Arrows of Kurnos in the late game are very, very, very dangerous. <laughs> and they're pretty good at general sniping if you get them in enough numbers. I don't know if a lot of people have tried that yet, but again, let's go take a quick look just so I can give you an example. Let's get the Wood Elves, and let's say that you get yourself a Glade Lord, and... Um, Let's put him on a giant eagle just for now. Abilities. Uh, maybe that's not the one that gets the arrows of Kurnos, actually. Abilities. The eye of Kurnos. Missile damage. Arrow of Kurnos. Okay, there we go. So we got the right character. Got her mounted up. Um, and then if we bring... Waystalkers, which... Is there no limit to these guys? Maybe there is a multiplayer, just not here. But let's say that someone decides to get cheesy and bring three Waystalkers... All of them having the Arrows of Kronos ability. And let's just um, throw out a hypothetical here. I'm just going to throw a few units in for balance bar's sake. 
And let's say that you were up against, um... Let's see, let's just pick someone here. Um... Maybe... Uh, actually, let's go... Whoops, I didn't mean to switch my faction, my bad. Had everything all picked. Sorry. Two, three, and let's get the Glade Lady. Put on her eagle, got her ability, okay. And then just a few of these out there. Let's, let's go ahead and pick the green skins just to give a demonstration. So let's say someone picks a uh, Orc War Boss. And even if they have a healing potion, let's take an Orc War Boss here. Put him on his boar, has his abilities. I'll even give him a potion. But we're going to start out pretty close to the green skins. I'm going to give the greenies a couple of boys. Yeah, just whatever. I mean, the army's not important. This is just more of a demonstration of what you're able to do with the Arrows of Kurnos. Which, again, if used in mass, can actually character snipe. So, and I don't believe there's a cool... No, there's no cooldown on it, so it's immediately available. And it has a very good range. So see, I can group all these uh, three Waystalkers together, and then Eagle here, too. And we'll see if it works. I didn't do a ton of damage this time. I've seen it do a lot more. But yeah, you can you can sometimes get some pretty significant character sniping done. Yeah, I see these Waystalkers now are going to be able to do pretty significant damage. Okay, I turned off the fire at will, I thought. Nope, oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, you got to watch out for your lords. Um, the elves can do this like forward deploy character snipe thing. It would probably work really good on a wizard because they have lower armor. Because of course it's always going to depend on how much armor. You got this ability here that if I had it ready, I could have used it to pin down the enemy lord. Yeah, this this is the kind of idea I'm talking about. Though I think that this guy. See if my guys have line of sight. Like if they can fire into that fight, I think they should be able to. Now nah, they're blocked. Yeah. Anyway, just trying to give you an idea. Like I said, didn't work out perfect that time, um, but just to show you, be careful of that if you can get character sniped sometimes by the elves. I think it works better versus like lower armor units. The war boss had quite a bit of armor. We can test that theory real quick. Uh, who doesn't have a lot of armor? The great goblin shaman doesn't. Let's try that. Just want to see if I was right here. Yeah, I hope you had some fun with these battles. Uh, hope you enjoyed this, kind of some of the discussion we had in between, too. Um, like I said, I'm not saying that this, this character sniping thing is a definite one-shot thing, but it can definitely be dangerous, so that's why I brought it to your attention. Let's get all these units. That's weird, it's just not doing much damage, and I've seen it do immense damage before. I wonder if you have to shoot him one at a time or something. Maybe it doesn't do the damage if you do it. Anyway, tell me what you think. If you've seen that, I swear I've seen that work before when I was watching uh, another battle from someone else, and uh, it's not working very well there, but whatever. If it doesn't work, then at least it means that that cheese won't work. Air of Carthage signing out for now. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.